So this past week while I was at work, we were stripping the floors and the floor stripper, if you've never dealt with it, is extremely slippery. Well, my old butt fell and it sent a shock wave through my back. And so I was down for a couple of days with my back and well, quite frankly, couldn't really move around too well. So I, I took every opportunity to just rest and relax my back. Then we also had contractors in the house uh, laying some flooring. So, you know, that kind of kept me here as well. Due to all of this, I did not get a chance to do a Keeping History on Two Wheels episode where I actually went anywhere. With that in mind, Mike Rowe does a uh, thing on Facebook and it's called uh, How I Heard It. I'll put the link in below. It's really very good and you need to watch it if you've never seen it. Well, with this past week's events, uh, I thought I would you know, follow Mike's lead and uh, do my own version of That's How I Heard It. Hopefully you'll like this video and if so, Please subscribe, it's right over here on the right and it's the little red button. Don't forget to hit the bell so that you'll know when we do an episode and we do one each and every week. A young man was born in Poland in 1740 who directly affected the establishment of the United States. He was born in Lesno or Lesson, uh, Poland on April 7, 1740 to a Sephardic Jewish family. Now, most Jews in Central and Eastern Europe spoke Yiddish, but because this man left uh, Poland at such a young age, he could neither read nor write in Yiddish. He did, however, learn several languages throughout his travels in Western Europe, as well as an education in finance. He returned to Poland in 1770, only to leave again in 1772 for England. And then in 1775, he migrated to the colonies, New York City to be exact, where he established himself as a broker for merchants involved in overseas trade. Sympathizing with the colonists, he joined the Sons of Liberty and shortly thereafter, the British arrested him as a spy. Now he spent 18 months on a boat interpreting for German troops who are employed by the British. While being held prisoner, he helped others escape and was pivotal in convincing the German troops to desert the war effort. After his release, he was arrested again and sentenced to death. Now, wanting no part of hanging from the short end of a rope, he escaped and he and his family relocated to the revolutionary capital of Philadelphia. It was here in Philadelphia that he became involved with Robert Morris. Now Morris was the superintendent for finance for the 13 colonies. And between 1781 and 1784, he was able to either raise funds or personally loan over $650,000 for George Washington's war effort. In today's rate, that would be over $18 million. When the Battle of Yorktown was about to happen and Washington's army and the French army had Cornwallis trapped in Virginia, Washington's war chest was empty. He couldn't finance the operation and was literally facing mutiny. And when Morris told Washington that he didn't have the money, the $20,000 needed, Washington gave one order, send for Hiam Solomon. Yes, the young man who provided for George Washington, what nobody else could, was the young man nobody ever heard of. The young man you won't find in any textbooks a young Jewish man without which there may not even be 
the United States of America. Hyam Solomon died on January 8, 1785 at the age of 44. His loans to the war effort going unpaid, he died in poverty. And that is how I heard. If you like this video, please subscribe. It's right down here on the left. It's a little red button. And once again, don't forget to hit that bell so that you'll be notified when we do an upload and we do one each and every week. And remember, every trip starts with a step. <laughs> and that step, it starts with you.